and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's so good seeing you guys again and having you guys back here with your big sister. So today I want to talk about the pros and cons of traveling and of course the pros and cons of traveling with kids in, an, in another country, so overseas or sometimes within your own country. And I'm going to be giving you tips and tricks on what to do, what to pack, and just how to make your trip overall smooth and making sure that everything goes well. But first, let's take a little sip. Cheers to more traveling. <laughs> mm. Love it. It's a cozy day today. You guys know I normally have champagne. But the weather outside is a bit, you know, chilly, it's raining. So some red wine, I think, will be good for us. So tips and tricks of traveling with or without kids. I'm going to start with the kids. The first thing I think that all moms need to do um, to be organized and make sure that the trip is smooth and seamless is to always book beforehand. Never leave anything to the last minute. I know that um, with home affairs lately, the, um, the passports, you can get them very, very quickly. But don't leave it to chance because you never know. You know, with my kid's passport, it literally took like a week. And um, it was quickly, it was fast. They always need their mom and dad there. So mommy and daddy, so that daddy can sign and mommy can sign and... So that, you know, they know that you're not taking the kids overseas without the dad's permission or without the mom's permission. So they always need both parents to be there at home affairs for the kids to sign for their passports. It's easy. It's seamless. As soon as you get there, um, you go and take your pictures, um, you pay, and that's it. And then after a week, they get an SMS and then your passport is ready tickets flight tickets you need to book as well because i've noticed that if you wait longer the it's the more expensive it gets it's always great to book um when it's not seasonal so sometimes in the winter time in a place like let's say for example where i was in mauritius um if you book in june july it's off season so then the tickets are a little bit cheaper than it would in December or November or in the summertime where everybody wants, you know, to go to a nice warm tropical area. So um, if you book then your, uh, your tickets for that time of the year, then, you know, it's a bit easier on the pocket. Now, when you um, travel with little ones, you have to make sure that you have all, you know, you all sit together. Um, whether you're traveling business or economy, it's important because a flight that's more than three hours plus, the kids really, really get, you know, irritable and they want to walk around and disturbing everybody on the plane. So just make sure that you sit next to them and they're not sitting with like some weird stranger. So arrange the seating accordingly. And of course, bring their favorite, favorite things. So if with, for me, for instance, I would charge... Make sure that their laptops are charged and their iPads are charged. And I would download their favorite games, their favorite movies. Just download a lot, you know, of their stuff. Make sure everything is, 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 is in order. And then bring their favorite comfort toy. Like you bring their favorite blankie or like a favorite teddy bear for them. If it's a baby, of course, you'll pack their formula and their little pacifier and their bottle and their nappies to make sure that you know they're comfortable during the trip. Now, when you get there at passport control, because usually passport control when you get there in another, in another country is very, very, very hectic. Um, so just make sure that everybody has signed their papers. Normally, if you sign in online, you can go straight to passport control and you can get your passport stamped. But if you haven't done it online, it's a bit hectic. You're going to have to wait in the queues and they'll give you those yellow papers that you have to sign in to say which country you're from, where are you staying, how long are you staying, how many of you are there. And yeah, so that's a bit tedious because then you wait in line. And sometimes the lines can be so, 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 so long. So, yeah. And then um, 
I went to a place called Beachcomber Resort. Now, this is in Mauritius. And Mauritius is is beautiful in a way that, you know, they know that you're coming beforehand. Obviously, wherever you've booked, they will arrange transport for you. So they'll arrange a a transfer for you. So if you're a family of five, like I've got three kids, and it's my husband and myself, they'll arrange a kumbi for you or a minibus, um, you know, a shuttle, basically. Um, to shuttle you from the airport to the um, resort. So normally it's about an hour. So Mauritius, everything is like an hour away. I don't know why that is, but everything is like an hour away. So it's one hour from the airport to the resort. And when you get there, it's absolutely beautiful. It's all inclusive. So all inclusive means that once you pay for accommodation, the food, lunch, breakfast, drinks supper everything is on like is included in the price that you pay for which is amazing so always go for all inclusive you know especially when you travel with little ones or even for yourself or for a partner i think it's value for your money because you know you pay a certain price and then everything is added in there and then uh so you get there and of course they give you some wet towels to refresh to refresh and it's beautiful. It's tropical. If you're going to go to a tropical area, make sure that you pack a lot of sunscreen because boy, oh boy, did your girl not get sunburned. <laughs> so make sure you get you pack your sunscreen and your hat and of course bug spray so you'll peaceful sleep for the mosquitoes because the mosquitoes do really, really bite and you'll get irritations and stuff like that. And then um, what else for the kids? Make sure that they've got their swimming costume. If they can't swim properly, make sure they've got their floaties. You've packed their floaties for them. And it's so safe there because there's literally lifeguards everywhere. There's lifeguards walking around. If you're drinking water, there's a lifeguard next to you. So it's pretty, pretty safe. You know, they make sure that everybody's safe, you know. Um, Yeah, and then you can book something amazing like your water sports. Um. You know, like your jets and scuba diving and everything in between. It's so fun. You never, never, ever get bored. And if you're like an avid reader like myself, make sure that, you know, I like to chill by the beach and just read a good book and just be like deep in the book and and just catch up on the reading. So bring your favorite books and just read and relax because remember, you are on holiday. Now, coming back is another nightmare on its own because when you come back, you make sure the night before you are full, you are packed. Do not leave any charges in the rest in the hotels. Um, you know, but the hotels are good. They'll keep your stuff and they'll they'll send you a message or an SMS or a email to say you've left your belongings and they'll keep them for you until you come back or they they can ship them or post them to you. You know, if you like desperately need them so make sure you pack all your bags beforehand you look at your times before you leave calculate your times from um the the hotel to the airport and make sure once again the kids gadgets charged and they're fine pack your medicine um especially because you don't know how the kids are going to react um in another country or you know so just pack your allergics and your panados or just pack some medicine just in case you know because sometimes with the language barrier i know that in mauritius they speak a lot french and creole so sometimes with the language barrier and they speak english as well um but it's better that you know you've got your own things and you're sorted you cannot you can never never be too organized you know you have to be super organized so that you don't have things like you're missing your flight or you got sick on your way there and there's nothing that anybody could do about it and so locally is a little bit simple and easier for me locally is nice because a flight to Durban is literally like what 30 to 45 minutes a flight to Cape Town is two hours um so it's 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 simple but it's also nice to have your own comforts as well as an adult for me my own comforts would be to charge my airport airpods make sure that they fall charge my favorite shows um a book to read um you know a little scarf you know because it does get a little bit nippy on the plane those the aircon i don't know why they put it on full blast it 
it's so cold on the plane sometimes and um yeah so small things that'll make your trip really really comfortable for you and also make sure i've seen a lot of girls make this mistake you know at the airport why are we wearing high heels like i don't know what what it is i know we're glamorous but i feel also like there's a time and place for everything you know i see the girlies the ladies running around at the airport in like six inch heels and tight skinny jeans and if you're late for boarding and you have to run to your boarding gate it's gonna be a problem because you're wearing heels so also for your own comfort as well you know you can be chic and comfortable while traveling so you can wear your like your athleisure wear you know so some nice tights some cute tights a nice trench over it some loafers you can wear um cute track suits you know there's so many things that you can wear you can wear like a nice flowy dress you can have a nice big traveling tote where you can put your scarves and your shawl in there and you don't have to be walking around in the airport with high heels because i just think it's like so uncomfortable but if you are a high heel girl and you want to walk around the airport with high heels then listen good for you you can do that but I would not recommend it because I, I think it's extremely uncomfortable, number one. And number two, if you are late to board your flight, then it might be a problem from running from one gate to the other. So, yeah, that could be a bit problematic. Um, yeah, so and depending on who, uh, like where you bank and what you do or if you want to pay a little bit extra, you can go to the lounge. The airport lounges are amazing. So you can go to like a Bidvest lounge or an SAA lounge. There's so many lounges and they've got so many beautiful treats. So you get to the lounge, you just show them your bank card where you bank. It's either you bank with Investec or FNB or any other bank. I think APSA also. Um, and if you don't, then you can always pay. Like, you know, you can always pay extra money for you to go and chill at the lounge. They they have that option. And of course, when you get there, you there's an, an assortment of um, food and drink and newspapers and magazines and limitless uncapped Wi-Fi. And the views are amazing because you can actually see, you know, the planes coming back in and out it's it's beautiful and you can watch tv and listen to the radio the lounge is really nice you know um i would recommend anybody to just go to the lounge while they wait for their flights it just makes the more the traveling experience more nicer you know the airport is is an experience on its own because the airport has got shops and it's got restaurants and it's got everything you need so imagine just traveling and having that experience on its own i would recommend arriving maybe three or four hours before your flight uh, if you're going overseas obviously so that you can have that experience of number one checking in on time without you know running around and then going through security security is another thing that i hate because security you have to literally take out everything take off your jewelry your earrings and everything else sometimes your shoes because everything beeps but once you get through security then you're done you can husa and you can breathe because you know you're fine um, but you also have to follow the rules and regulations of security because I remember one time I had an expensive bottle of perfume and it was over a hundred mils. It was, and you know, the rules are 50, 50 or lower than that. And I think locally you can get away with a bottle that's like a hundred mils, but overseas you can't. And they had to confiscate that beautiful bottle of perfume that I had. And no matter how, how much I begged, they were like, ma'am, you cannot, you know, so they confiscate it and they throw them away. I heard they don't even keep them for their families. They take them and they throw them away. So please be careful, you know, at, at, at shops like Discamo Clicks, you can get like these cute little bottles where you can decant your favorite fragrance, your favorite lotion into these little bottles so that you don't take the whole thing with you and have the risk of it being confiscated. So, yeah, the, the airport is an experience on its own then because you can go to the shops as well and shop duty-free, duty-free alcohol, duty-free fragrance, duty-free makeup. It's, ah, oh, it's beautiful, you know. 
And then, yeah, then you can just take your stuff and be able to board and get into the flight and enjoy your trip. So those are my um, tips and tri- tips and tricks for traveling by yourself or with little ones at the airport, whether it's international or it's local. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mwah.